Good morning. Welcome again. Today we will start with the second lecture on Australia. That's the world geography we will be learning through maps. Now these would be the topics that would be covered for today's lecture. To understand any of these topics, we need to have an idea of what we have discussed in the last class. So a kind of quick recap to help you understand that. So you have the Murray Darling Basin, the most important rivers that flowed uh, in the south east part of Australia. Then the second important thing that you need to keep in mind is the uh, divisions, the climatic divisions that we have talked about. So tropical vegetation, temperate vegetation here and in the region of Tasmania. Then you have the desert vegetation and the Mediterranean vegetation. So keeping these two important things in mind, we would cover the first three topics. So first of all, soil. As we can understand, the fertility of soil is maximum in the region of Murray Darling Basin. That's the region of New South Wales and the region of Victoria. Now, because you have a high fertility, it would be highly correlated to the type of agriculture that is present here. So the most important agriculture that would be present here would be rice. So that's the first thing you need to understand here. Now, since it's a kind of tropical vegetation or a kind of tropical climate rather, what would be the important vegetation in this area? It would be papaya, pineapple. So all those fruits would be part of this area. However, here we have a Mediterranean climate. So as we know in Mediterranean type of climate, we have lots of citrus vegetation. So citrus fruits, lemons, oranges would be found in this region. So uh, be, besides this, in the region of Tasmania, that's the island here, you would have a lot of apple cultivation. Now, coming on to rice, we have already talked about in the Murray Darling Basin, that would be the prominent position for the location of rice. Then coming on to the cultivation of wheat. So wheat would be cultivated in the region of New South Wales, region of Victoria and parts of Northern Australia. However, the Western Australia, since it's a desert region, you won't have uh, the wheat cultivation here. The only cultivation that could be seen would be in the form of coarse grains here. A very interesting thing to remember is you have the coral reef here. Parallel to the coral reef or the Great Barrier Reef, we could say, is the cultivation of sugarcane. So you can remember it in an either way that uh, corals are fond of, of are fond of sweet things, so this region would have the sugarcane cultivation. Now, a brief idea about uh, sugarcane cultivation: it started basically in New Guinea and then moved into the regions of Queensland via the Cape York Peninsula, and the region of the Western Queensland is basically a sugarcane cultivation region. In the process of sugarcane cultivation, there are four stages that are to be considered. The first is planting. Now, how is planting done? You have furrows that are made or that are being dug and then you have sets. These sets are basically the pieces of the sugarcane. They, they are dropped in this furrow line by line and therefore you have a kind of uh, planting process that is being done. The second is the processing that is done. The third is retooning. Retooning means basically leaving a part of the stock of the sugar cane for the next crop to come up. And finally, you have the harvesting that is done. So those are the major processes that take place in sugarcane industry. Sugarcane industry is very important in Australia. When we talk about sugarcane industry, there are numerous byproducts that we talk about and the regions where the sugarcane is exported. So the sugarcane from Australia mainly goes to Canada, then it goes to Japan and Malaysia. Those are the neighboring regions. Now, understanding the byproducts is again very important. The first byproduct is bagasse that's used basically for generation of electricity. Then you have boiler ash. Boiler ash is used as fertilizer. It's also used basically uh, for the uh, agricultural industries. The next important, very important is molasses. 
Molasses are used for the manufacturing of alcohol. Besides the manufacturing of alcohol, it's directly used as a feed for the livestock or for the animals that are present there. So molasses become important. Then you have ethanol. Ethanol is basically used in cosmetic industries. Uh, so that's again a very important byproduct. Uh, another very important byproduct is persimmon. So persimmon is basically used for polishing the shoe polish, wax, so all those carbon paper, all these require persimmon and that's again a byproduct of the sugar industry. So those are the major agricultural industries or the agricultural locations that we have talked about. Water, as we said, two important sources of water. First is the Murray Darling Basin in the uh, Southeast Australia. The next important region for water is the Great Artesian Basin. Great Artesian Basin is uh, supposed to provide nearly 20% of the total water requirements of Australia. So it's again very very important. It's basically the recharging of the groundwater that takes place. Besides that lakes. Now the two most important biggest lakes we could say as we have discussed yesterday is Lake Ayer and below that you have Lake Torrens. So Ere and Torrens are the major lake. If we talk about a uh, deepest lake, it's St. Clair. The next important lake would be a kind of volcanic lake. So under volcanic lake, you have blue lake. Then you have some of the coastal lakes like Alexandria. So those are some of the important lakes that we talk about in the water resources. Soil we have already talked about. Most of this region of Australia has an elevation of around 300 meters above sea level. The maximum uh, is seen in some of the mountainous regions, but on an average, the elevation is quite low. So we can say Australia on an average has predominantly the lowland areas. So we have talked about soil, water and agriculture. Coming on to the next, that is animal rearing. Under animal rearing, we classify this into three categories. The first is sheep. The second is cattle. The third is beef. Very interesting to note the difference between cattle and beef. So cattle is found mainly in the uh, regions of Queensland and beef again in the regions of Queensland. However, when I talk about beef, it's in the northern Queensland. However, cattle is found mainly in the southern Queensland. So within the region of Queensland, north you would have beef, south you would have cattle. So just Rubbing, rubbing, rubbing it off to make it simpler now. Now understanding the distribution of sheep and cattle. Sheep specifically from Australia is the merino and merino is known for its finest quality of wool. So the region of sheep would be this. Now the cattle region is predominantly this region. It's known for its uh, dairy industry and pasture and fodder needs you have the cattle supplies that are there now sheep when we talk about very important thing a thing that is obtained from sheep here is wool as we said merino sheep is known for the best quality of wool that it produces now the place where sheep are kept together are known as sheep stations so you have numerous sheep stations that are present here Along with the sheep stations, the fodder that is being required is mainly a grass and that is known as alfalfa, a very important grass. Sometimes the name of the grass could be a very direct question that could be asked here. Uh, the next important thing is the regions of cattle that we have already marked. So sheep, cattle and beef, three important things. Besides that, the regions of northern uh, territory, you have Darwin. And Darwin is considered as one of the major ports for fishing. So under animal rearing or aquaculture, you have Darwin port that is important. So with this, we cover the fourth point that's animal rearing. Coming on to the next, that is minerals. Again, very important. The first that we talk about is the gold deposits. So gold is found mainly in West Australia and parts of uh, 
Tasmania. Then gold is also seen in the uh, sorry in West Australia. You also find a lot of iron and zinc that is present. So those are some of the important minerals that are found here. If we talk about the region of New South Wales where you have abundant water supply, you also have coal deposits. Now since you have coal deposits here. Uh, this is a prominent position for the location of industries because industries would require uh, electricity and it would be the closest source of electricity and therefore again electricities uh, sorry industries would be located mainly in the region of New South Wales and the regions of Victoria. Again in the Mediterranean region where we have seen where you have lot of uh, citrus fruits along with the citrus fruits you have viticulture that is seen and production of wine is again important here. Again when we talk about industries one major export here is the macadamia nuts. So macadamia nuts also become a very important export item from Australia. So those are the major industries that we have talked about. Now besides that you have bauxite mining in the regions of Queensland and then you have oil and natural gas. The two important locations for oil and natural gas is one is the Gippsland in Victoria. The, no the next is the Northwest Sheaf that is part of the Western Australia. So oil and natural gas again become very very important. So we have covered the major mineral and the industries coming on to population. Australia on an average is a sparsely populated region. The population density is very less around two persons per square kilometer with an approximate of around 20 million population that we say of which 85% of the population is mainly confined into the bigger cities. So we have the Sydney, Perth, Canberra, Melbourne, uh, so all those would have nearly 85% of the population. The most of the desert region as we have seen which encompasses the western and the central part of Australia is predominantly devoid of human uh, habitation and it is therefore also known as the dead heart of Australia. So a common phrase that is being used is the dead heart of Australia. So dead heart of Australia basically implies the region which does not have a kind of densely populated region. The local people which reside here are the groups which are known as indigenous Australians. Now some of the classic characteristics of these indigenous Australians. First, they are basically a kind of tribal group. Uh, living on or thriving on the primitive methods. So you have uh, these as a nomadic tribe, they predominantly consume white ants or they feed on white ants. The instruments that they use, one of the most important instrument is boomerang. And boomerang is an interesting instrument and it's of this sh shape and they just throw it to catch the uh, or to hunt. So that's boomerang. Besides that, they have numerous musical instruments that is very popular in this region. So some of the good musical instruments here are known as didigiru. Didrigu and Yardeki. Besides that, you have clapping sticks. So those are some of the instruments that are used by the indigenous Australians. The, that is what is covered under the section on population. Now again, as we said, population is sparse and people are distributed far apart. So when people are distributed far apart, medical becomes an important concern. So what is the concept of doctors in this region is the concept of flying royal doctors that are seen. So doctors fly from one region to another to the patients wherever they, find, uh, wherever they are located and therefore this service is known as royal flying doctors. Considering this in mind, in India mainly in the northeastern parts, we are also considering the idea of flying doctors to be incorporated. The next important thing is transportation. So under transportation, we already talked about the air transportation that's mainly as the flying royal doctors. The only international airlines that runs here is Qantas. Then comes two important transportation means. First is the railway line. So to understand the railway line, uh, we say the railway line runs from Perth till Sydney. And it's the only railway line that connects 
द होल ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंट और द ओनली रेलवे लाइन दैट मूव थ्रू एंटायर कॉन्टिनेंट कवरिंग अ स्ट्रेच ऑफ नियरली थ्री फोर थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी टू किलोमीटर्स इट्स ऑल्सो नोन एज द ट्रांस ऑस्ट्रेलियन रेलवे लाइन द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज द रोडवेज सो रोड्स आर बेसिकली हेयर नोन एज द कॉमनवेल्थ हाईवेज ना हाउ डज दिस वर्ड कॉमनवेल्थ केम वी टॉक्ड अबाउट इन द लास्ट क्लास इन नाइनटीन ओ वन इट वॉज डिक्लेयर्ड एज द कॉमनवेल्थ ऑफ ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड देर फॉर All the highways here are known as Commonwealth highways. The most important highway here is the Strat Highway. Now, this Strat Highway is the important because it's the longest highway that runs from Adelaide to Darwin, connecting north and south. So, the longest railway line, east and west, that's from Perth to Sydney, Trans Australian railway line. The longest uh, roadways, that's the Strat Highway, running from Adelaide to Darwin. So those are some of the important things. Then besides that, you have waterways. So waterways, the most busiest port in Australia is Sydney. Coming on to cities, three major cities that we would discuss today. You have Sydney, Canberra, and Melbourne. Now we'll cover these one by one. Canberra, the capital of Australia, known for the Parliament, the National Gallery, and the National Museum. Melbourne is basically the sporting center and the cultural center of Australia and coming on to Sydney it's considered as a harbor city two important things which are located in Sydney are the opera house and the harbor bridge the construction of opera house by John Ulston uh, Ulston is again very very important so those are the basic things uh, under cities that we have covered in Sydney so with this we cover our second lecture on Australia in the third lecture we would focus on the continent of New Zealand and all the neighboring uh, continents that's the Polynesia Mel Melanesia and Micronesia Asia. So stay tuned for our third lecture on Australia and then we'll be covering further continents in the upcoming classes. Do stay tuned. Have a very good day ahead.